Hi, I'm Darren Ferrugia and welcome. A few videos back, I presented a video based on two triplet ideas and one of those triplet ideas was in 2.4 and the other triplet idea was in 3.4. And the concept, the overriding concept is really being able to learn these two different patterns and then being able to randomly move between those two patterns when you're improvising to help randomize the sound of your ideas. So you're not just playing one idea over and over and over, but instead you're kind of just moving between those two ideas so that it doesn't sound like you're just playing the same thing over and over and over. If you haven't seen that video, I'm going to leave a link to that video in the description below. So in today's video, I'm going to present two other ideas and those are the ideas that you heard me play right at the beginning. So let's get into it. They're not that difficult, but they're very effective and they sound great. So the first pattern I'm going to teach you is in 2-4. So it's two lots of triplets, one and uh, two and. Uh. So the first triplet is right, left, left. The second triplet is made up of two bass drum notes and unison hands. Now in this case I'm going to orchestrate the right hand on the first tom and the left hand is playing the snare drum. I'm accenting both of those hand strokes. So the left hand stroke on the snare drum is played as a rim shot and it sounds like this. I'll put those two beats together and we get this. I'm going to give you a bar of 2-4 as a count in. 1 and a 2 and a. Now you can move the right hand around the kit, around the toms. I like to keep the left hand on the snare drum because it kind of fattens up that flam. Um, so for example, I'll just mess with that. One, two, one, two. So that's the 2-4 component. The 3-4 component is the same thing except we're just adding a right left left as our third beat. So I'll play that for you and I'm going to give you a count of 3-4 into this. One and a, two and a, three and a. And then as I did before I can move the right hand around the toms. So the next step is to just try to incorporate these ideas as fills. And also in this context, I'm going to think of them now as 16th note triplets. So um, I'll play one bar of time and then I'll play this particular lick as 16th note triplets and this way you can hear how that's going to fit in a bar of 4-4. Four, four. So what I'll do this time is take that 3-4 example, I'll play that as 16th note triplets in a bar of 4-4, four, four. so I'll get to play that pattern twice and I'll have to make up a little bit at the end. Um, you'll get the idea. One, two, three, four. Now before I continue, if you want to download the PDF that accompanies this video, I'm going to leave a link to that in the description below. The next step is to just be able to improvise between these two patterns, just randomly moving between each of these patterns for you know any number of times each. Um, 
what we're going for here is uh, just flow, being able to flow between those two patterns. As I've demonstrated in the previous video that I mentioned that I uploaded some weeks ago. Another aspect that I believe is really important is just to be able to keep your left foot going on the hi-hat, being able to keep the hi-hat foot playing through all of these patterns. It's really great for your coordination. It's great for your time. It also means that if you're improvising with other musicians, it gives them a reference as to where the time is, where the pulse is, and it's nice for your audience to also know where the time is too. So definitely get that hi-hat foot involved. Anyway, I'm gonna mess around with these two patterns and just see what happens. Now if you're sharp enough, you may have heard that I actually added a few extra right left lefts in there. So really it's that right left left that extended that first pattern that was in 2-4 into a 3-4 pattern. So I can add an extra right left left again as you heard to turn that pattern into a 4-4 four, four pattern. So here's an example. One, two, three, four. So you can mess around with that too. Don't be afraid to just throw in those extra right, left, lefts. Now a really neat orchestration idea that I love to play with this is to just play that pattern rather than playing the right hand on the toms. I usually throw this pattern in on the ride cymbal if I'm already playing a ride cymbal groove. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. Once this starts to feel comfortable and familiar to you, the next step would be to implement this or integrate this into your existing vocabulary. And you know, you can do that by way of, you know, improvisation. So what I'm going to do is just play around the drum kit using my vocabulary. I'm going to throw some of these ideas in. I'm going to start out slow and then I might give you a couple of um, faster examples. Here we go. So those are two new patterns that you can have a little bit of fun with. They're pretty easy, but they sound really great. The challenge is, you know, keeping them even, 
playing your hi-hat foot against those and then also as they get a bit faster you're dealing with a double on the kick and there's a bit more demand on the left hand but you know they sound good at slow tempos too. So have a lot of fun with those, try to implement those, try to integrate those into your vocabulary. If you enjoyed this video give it the thumbs up and uh, if you haven't done so already please subscribe and remember to hit that notification bell uh, so that you know when I've uploaded a video which is every week. So until next week have a great week, have fun doing this and um, I'll see you all very soon. Bye. Gotta wipe my brow. Oh, man, come on, Farooj, come on. It's really hot in here.